God's purposes for marriage. Intimate, multidimensional, or complex companionship. That's the idea here. What do I mean by that? It means there's different vocations within marriage. There's different roles and functions. We'll talk about that in our next session. But that's the idea here. It's, it's, it's on so many different levels that our relationship hinges on. Even verbal, that we could talk to one another. Again, if you want to get a pet, you could talk to your pet and make your pet talk to you. Right? You use your pet voice on the pet. But it's not going to be the same thing. <laughs> You're not going to have that kind of communication that you could have with another person when creating our image. Emotional, physical, all those different layers, all those different levels. God has created his purpose for, for us, and he's given us marriage in that way, that it's multi, it's complex companionship. That's how we fulfill. That's how we complete that's how we complement one another. Secondly is procreation, the propagation of the human race. Be fruitful, multiply, have families, get married, have babies. That's what the Lord is saying. Let's do that. That's, that's part of our, our um, command to uh, dominion, creation command there. To have a heritage, to leave a legacy, to have that, that family. That's, that's part of God's purpose and plan for marriage. Again, we know that not everybody can or, or does have children. It doesn't mean you're not a family if you, if you don't or you can't, but that's part of what the Lord has for us. And then the exercise of dominion, that is subduing the earth. When we do that to his glory, we bring order, structure, security, foundation for a stable society, all for his glory. That's the idea. As we consider, listen, everything we do is for the glory of God including marriage. So if you're a Christian today and you think about what God has created, some days you just go out, you get your cup of coffee, you have your Bible, your devotional, right? You go out to your back porch and you're just hanging out and you're reading and you're looking around and you're just praising God. You're like the psalmist, you know, looking around. Oh, Lord, look at all this that you've made, how wonderful this is. It just speaks to your glory, to your goodness, to, to your grace, we don't deserve this. When I see all the things that you've, what is man so frail and weak that you should consider him, right? As David says. We see that. We just, we, we praise him for the general revelation, for, for, for his creation. It's the same thing when we come to marriage. This is what he has given. When we think about marriage, we should be moved to give him thanks. Now, I know some of us in our marriages, that's the last thing we want to be doing. Yeah, thank you, Lord, for this. Are you kidding me? Really, we need to be giving him thanks for perfectly providing all that we need to meet our deepest needs. So, so don't overlook that. Think about that. That he gave us this institution for his glory, yes, but especially for our good because God is a giver, because God loves us, because God, in that sense, wants us to have the best. Here it is. Here's what I've done for you. What are you going to do with it? 